eight. Jeremy Siwa on seven. These two are uh, going toe to toe in that little competition. Fly Racing, 15 second board has been up. The gate about to drop here. MX2, MXGP race two, 30 minutes plus two laps. A bad jump for Siwa, but it's Fevra. And Koldenhoff, who duke it out, and Koldenhoff it is, who leads through the first turn. And crosses the foxhole shot line for the second time this season. Ah, oh, riders down. Was that Ferrato in there? Siwa was down, one of the riders. We'll have a quick look. Let's go back there if we can. Well, we'll have a look in a minute, but Koldenhoff leads. Prado, second. Fevre, third. Fernandez, fourth. Gio, fifth. No, Siwa in sixth place, or he was in sixth place, but nowhere to be seen here, is he? No, he's not, because it's Mitch Evans who comes into land. And then Ben Watson, Tim Cock, Calvin Villanra, and Jeremy Van Horvick, and Yeri Havisto, with Osland, Petrov, Dickinson, Steri, Nico Cock, Tom Cock, Jacoby, Spies, and Alvirio. Yeah, Ferrato, Lupino, Siwa, possibly riders that went down in that turn to Malay. But it's the Hoff, Glenn Koldenhoff, who leads the way. We'll get a replay as and when of that second turn. But look at the urgency. Jorge Prado knows he can further extend his championship lead here. But he would also, more than that, like to win his 38th career Grand Prix victory. Watch this here. Siwa in fourth, fifth place. Cuts to the inside. Ferrato alongside him. Those two tag each other. Best of mates. They go down. I mean, come on, guys. Save the loving for later. Lupino right to the back of him as well. And somebody taking a massive shortcut through the inside. I'm sure that'll get looked at and investigated as well. And they are good mates, Jeremy Siwa and Albi Ferrato, but uh, they're going to have to pull themselves through the pack, and they are line astern at the moment, 22nd and 23rd for Ferrato and Siwa. Siwa second in race one. A lot of work to do now, though, because he's already 20 seconds or more down on these two, who are second and third, Jorge Prado and Roman Fevre. Cold enough, leading the way. Already has a race win under his belt. Race two in Sardinia, round two. Out of turn six. Nothing in it between the first three riders, really. Just a couple of seconds, so about a second between each. Then Fernandez about two seconds further back for Team HRC. Give this race a couple of laps to settle down. They've had their spiked heart rates. From the gate drop, the adrenaline rush. Pushing hard just to stay out of trouble. Try and put some distance. Settle things down. They may now, these first three, just kind of find that line between what's comfortable and what needs to be done. Because Koldenhoff, no, he just needs to maintain a good enough pace to keep Prado at bay at the moment. It's down to Prado to make the first move, or Fevre. And we saw Fevre was keen to work his way to the front. He got into fourth and then fell almost immediately. And that cost him in conditions that were a little bit wetter at the start of race one. Ferrato, 19th. Siwa already up to 17th. So we need probably to follow that battle, that fight as well, because Siwa will be carving his way through the pack like a knife through butter. So at some stage, we might need to just uh, go back and forth because he's already up to 15th place. And that'll be some fun watching as well because uh, Jacoby ahead of him in 14th. It'd be nice to see that fight through the field. Maybe not when he gets to about eighth or so because everybody tightly packed. So he's going to have to be using some really intelligent racecraft as he fights his way through traffic. And Ferrato, who's a couple places further back, Two laps complete. 
Kodnok continues to lead. 1.3 seconds over Jorge Prado. Roman Fevre, about a second and a half further back. So, Glenn Kodnok, Monster Energy Yamaha leads Prado on the Red Bull Gas Gas. Kawasaki Racing Team MXGP's Roman Fevre patiently waiting there in third position. Here's Jeremy Siwa. He is up into 13th. He's found his way past Jacoby, and he's now locking his sights on Alvin Oslin on the JW Racing Honda. The Swede just ahead of him here. Oh, I just grabbed his leg there as he took off. But you can see the difference, the sense of urgency between the Honda rider and the Yamaha man who cuts to the outside. He will go around the outside at uh, turn 10 and pick off Swede at the first opportunity but Oslin just keeping him back there at the moment and uh, Fevre has been down he picks himself up just in front of his teammate Mitch Evans Evans now in fourth place Fevre down to fifth so Evans then find himself at the sharp end Mitch Evans around the outside, the Australian who needs not just a bit of luck, but a lot of luck at the moment. Hasn't broke into the top ten yet, but here he is, just getting past there by his teammate, Roman Fevre, who goes by for fourth place. But great to see Mitch fighting this one out. Ninth in race one. Would be sixth overall if he stays where he is at the very least. And he'll try and latch on to his teammate here as he continues to improve week in, out, week, in week out. Fevre, number three, now up into fourth place. About three, four seconds down. Watch this here, top of your screen. There you go, left, tips over. He was closing in on Prado. He just picks himself up. Not before his teammate had gone through, though. And here he is again. It wasn't this turn that was the one adjacent to that. Meanwhile, nothing in it between our two leaders, Glenn Koldenoff and Jorge Prado. Prado, fastest lap of the race last time around at 54, a 154.10. Kodanov set his best lap as well, 154.4, so two or three tenths in it between them. But it's Jorge Prado who is just gaining momentum here as we near the end of lap four. But it's Kodanov who still has the advantage over Prado. Working our way towards the end of lap four, Koldenoff, Monster Energy, Yamaha continues to lead the Red Bull Gas Gas of Jorge Prado. Koldenoff going after his second race win, Jorge Prado, even if he stays where he is, would still stand on the top step of the podium. Still plenty of racing to go though, 21 and a half minutes plus two. Here's Siwa. He's found his way past Valandra and moves into 10th place. Up the inside. And a good move that from the 91 as well. See, we're now 10th. Meanwhile, the 226 of Tom Cock is next on the watch list for the 91 of Siwa. Tries to lean on the German, the Cossack KTM rider. But a mistake mid-turn there. And that Siwa just had to find another rut to drop into. He's going with him, look, every step of the way. The 303 on the SM Action USA battery KTM coming into shot now, just on the high line and in the background. And just ahead of these guys. 
The number 89, the Jerry man, Jeremy Van Horemick. In for the injured Paul Jonas. What a solid Grand Prix he's having. Eighth overall he'll be. As it stands right now, happy just to circulate. Give some air time for the standing construct Honda team. But it's Siwa down at turn two, who's battling his way through traffic. But struggling to find his way past Tom Cock at the moment. This will be for ninth place if he can find his way through. Will he go the long way round in turn two? Well, he thought about taking the middle, but Tom Cock just uh, ruled him out of the way there. This is where things just kind of interfere with the race, just slowing things down. And Ferrato gaining. Just under 19 and a half minutes plus two to go. Jeremy Sewer eventually finds his way into ninth with that move on Tom Cock. And hits the line. In ninth, just behind Jeremy Van Horbeek there on the standing construct Honda. The number 89. As we said a moment ago, in for the injured Paul Jonas, the Latvian. Good points in, for, in race one, in 11th position. He's currently circulating in eighth, is the Jerry man on the number 89. But he's got a hard charging Jeremy Siwa closing in on him. And just a couple riders further back, Alberto Ferrato as well. Meanwhile, Kolonov still about eight tenths clear of Jorge Prado at the head of the field. With Fernandez about eight and a half seconds further back in third. Fevre two seconds drift in fourth. And Mitch Evans, great ride for him in fifth place. The two Kawasaki's line astern. See what on the prowl though for more positions, more points. Goes the outside of the Belgian. Can't find a way through there though. This time he will get alongside and jumps past and into eighth place. Just ahead of him, Tim Cock, number 86. Yeah, there are three Cocks in this race. Tim, Tom and Nico. All making good starts. All enjoying their home Grand Prix here, the Liquid Molly MXGP of Germany. So the 86 of Tim Cock. Just a couple of seconds further up the track. All of a sudden, Kolonov, two full seconds clear of Prado at the head of the field. And back down to 1.7 as they hit the first sector. So Kolonov trying to shake Prado, Prado responding. Meanwhile, Siwa in the top 10, battling hard. The Swiss rider just regrouping here, number 91. Oh, hello. <laughs> 70 and three, Fernandez and Fevre. These two now fighting over third place. Just having to readjust my eyes there. Speedy camera work. We are on lap seven. Still plenty of time to run, look, 16 and a half minutes. Fernandez solid in race one. Third overall, he's going to be on the podium as it stands right now. On the third step. Fevre just wants to muscle his way around. Fernandez just keeping him to the outside. But all of a sudden, the urgency from Fevre. Can he stay there? Not quite. Fernandez just hanging on to that third position at the moment. Kolonov eyeing up second overall at the moment with a fourth and a win if he stays there. Continues to lead the race, of course. But seven laps complete. Fernandez, Team HRC. 56-4 compared to the 54-8. And Fevre looking to go around the outside. 
Menendez sees a green flash, knows it's Fevre waiting to make a move. But where will that move happen? Fevre has been behind now for a couple of laps. And if Fernandez jumps long, Fevre will cut to the inside, try the short route through, turn 10, gets alongside, and he's going to have to go the long way around here as well, unless he can put the squeeze on him. But he cuts to the inside. Oh, real cat and mouse stuff between these two. Fevre can't get across because of all the ruts. Look, again, he's going to have to go the long way round. And the sun just dropping in the eyes of the riders on this part of the racetrack. And Fevre goes through, takes third from the Spaniard. Took him a few laps to get there, but finally on lap eight, Fevre goes through. Now he has clear track, but unfortunately he's got 10 seconds to make up to Jorge Prado, who is still hovering around a second and a half behind the race leader, Glenn Koldenhoff. Meanwhile, Siwa has cleared Van Horebeek. He's up in the seventh place, eight and a half seconds behind Ben Watson. What a ride for Ben Watson. So lap eight, about to come to an end with 14 minutes to go. And he's already broken free from Ruben Fernandez. Fernandez just saying, you know what? Happy just to get through this one this weekend if I can. If he can do it with a podium, that'll be fantastic. It'll be his third, third podium of the year as well. Right, here is Jorge Prado. Watch this here. Oh, is he jumping long? Whoa, landed in a hole the other side there. Lucky for the Spaniard. Sucks it up and goes again. Still within a couple of seconds of the race leader. Right. We've got a cop fight going on down here. 10th place. Tom Cock has found his way past brother Tim. Gio is up into 15. Jacoby down to 16. Here's Ben Watson, the MRT beater, his teammate Lupino out in the second turn after getting caught up with Ferrato and Siwa. But Ben Watson, 919 on that factory beater, arrived here 16th in the championship. Got a 10th place finish in race two in Switzerland. That was his first top 10 result. Four DNFs, four no scores in a row in Spain and France. 11th in race one in Latvia and uh, didn't make it through the first turn in race two. But great to see the former MX2 Grand Prix winner fighting here in Germany. And he's got about seven seconds over Siwa. Siwa a couple seconds quicker, though. But this is the kind of result that he and the team need because even uh, Lupino, with uh, one top ten finish, ninth in race two, Latvia last time out. So to say this is a factory bike, yes, it's in his third year. But a great advert for the MRT team and Beta. That's the gap between him and Siwa. Right. What were the splits between Watson and Siwa? 34, 33 in, lap, in sector two, 25, 24, sector three. So uh, Siwa is closing. The gap down to 6.4 seconds at the moment. After Siwa set his fastest lap last time around in the 55s, he needs positions he need passes he needs at least two to get himself onto the podium three maybe because uh, Fernandez there on 38 Siwa on 36 points and time is ticking away time is not a luxury for Siwa but you never know 11 minutes plus two is a long time in MXGP but he's still looking good at the moment recovering well to seven after that first turn fall just under 11 minutes to go Jeremy Siwa has now finally broken free from Albi Ferrato the SM Action US a battery gas gas KTM rider lurking in 8th place but now 5 seconds adrift of the number 91 from Switzerland the gap between Watson and C were now 4.7 seconds, so he may 
take a couple of laps to get himself onto the rear wheel of the Brit. But then who else is up the track? Evans, about 12 seconds further up. So uh, going to be interesting to see whether Siwa can pull this off here. There's Watson, just over the Liqui Molly Mountain. And you see how the circuit is dry now. Hard and slick and edgy. That's the part of the racetrack that caught out Hurlings in race one. Bad luck for the bullet once again. Still no news as to his condition. But there were reports. I was talking to Harry Norton during the break and he said uh, yeah just all the right side you know sort of like from the head the neck down through the shoulder the back so uh, he was in the medical center for quite some time so he'll get checked out here on site before heading back to further observations I'm sure with his own trusted advisors and doctors but a big blow to Jeffrey Hurling's championship chase for a six world title here at round nine Jeremy Siwa now in seventh place. So Jeremy Siwa here. What a ride he is having. He's closing in now on Ben Watson. So nine minutes plus two to go here. MXGP race two. Jeremy Siwa up to seven. This is his race so far. Just to the inside look in white and the, uh, the red boots. He cross ruts, Albi Ferrato runs into the back of him, and then Lupino. And since then, he's been carving his way through traffic. This pass on uh, Kevin Valandran got him up into 10th place. He then eventually found his way past Tom Cock. And then Jeremy Van Horbeek to move into 8th. He's now up into 7th. Chasing Ben Watson. We said it'd be a couple of laps and right on cue. He's all over the back of the 919 on the MRT beta. And, Jer and uh, his teammate, Glenn Koldenoff. What a race he's having at the moment. 2.2 seconds clear of Jorge Prado as he goes in search of his second race win of the season. And here's what happened at the start. Gate about six or seven over. The 259, Glenn Coldenoff, Monster Energy Yamaha around the outside of Roman Fevre to pull the foxhole shot for the second time this year, and he continues to lead by about two seconds. See what eyes on Ben Watson, the MRT racing beater. Just happy to be inside the top ten. But Siwa going after Watson. This will be for sixth position if he can sneak up the inside. Watson knows he's there. To the left. To the left. Trees, he does it. Oh, here we go. He's found his way by. That was a fantastic move on Siwa, wasn't it? So Jeremy Siwa launches past Ben Watson into sixth position. now has clear track once again right Watson how far is he got he's got about four and a half seconds back to Albi Ferrato those two yeah I was gonna say similar lap times but Ferrato just a little bit quicker so Watson could drop down to eight but that would still be a good finish for that factory team right Siwa has about wow, 10 seconds that's a big ask to close in on Mitch Evans because Evans in the 57s, almost 58s. Siwa 56s, almost 55s. But with six minutes plus two to go, depends on two things, the stamina of both riders, whether Siwa can keep pushing or whether Mitch Evans, who was a, a little bit ring rusty when he came back, can believe in himself and believe that he belongs there in that fifth place on the number 43 Kawasaki. Here's Fernandez. He's about four seconds clear of the Kawasaki rider, Mitch Evans. Fernandez iron up third overall. Take a look at the podium standings, shall we? Here is Mitch Evans, first of all. 
great just to see him back there. Great to see him back on screen as well. Things finally clicking for the Aussie. Been a very difficult campaign for him. Missed the first four rounds. Due to a, a persistent thumb injury that he picked up just before the start of the season. May have tweaked it again a week ago in Latvia, but he's just riding around all of his issues at the moment. Hopefully things will settle down for him. But great to see the 43 up there doing just that and battling on. And it'll put a, a smile on the face of Antti Pirinen as well, because third and fifth for both the Kawasaki Racing Team guys. Kawasaki Racing Team MXGP. Here is Fevra. Right, Fevra, nine seconds adrift. Right, this was Fevra, took the look to the left. This is when he was in third early on. Just came up short and then folded the front. Picked himself up just behind his teammate. And then eventually found his way back past for fourth. And he's now into third, having passed Ruben Fernandez. But Jorge Prado is on the prowl. He just set the fastest lap of the race. A 153.9 compared to a 54.3 of Glenn Koldenov. Is the Hoff's lead at threat here in the final Four minutes plus two laps. Sector one, identical through that turn there. 26.52, 26.56. There they are in the top right corner, just over the monster energy jump, coming back in the opposite direction. Ah, oh, practice face of Jorge Prado there from Glenn Koldenoff as the roost off the rear wheel, right in the face. Watch this. Rap. Right in the face. Unperturbed, though. Oh, that was nice from Prado. Wheeling through that kicker and gaining on the Dutchman. This is going to be a long three minutes or so for the Hoff. Oh, and he makes a mistake there, and that'll play into the hands of Prado. No time to look back, to look back. But that's not Koldenov's game either. Keeps his eyes fully focused on the job at hand. But Prado, closer than he has been all race. See the two different line choices there. Outside or jump onto the start straight as you cross back at 45 degrees. And he knows he's under threat here. Two and a half minutes plus two to go. Who will win race two? Will it be Koldenov or Prado? Nothing in it as they hit the line at the end of lap 14. And Prado looking desperate. He was quick around here in race one. Will he be equally effective in race two? Not quite this time around. Two minutes plus two to go. And the annoying thing here now, traffic for both riders. Ah, oh, neatly done. Prado cuts to the inside. He's got traffic ahead of him, though. The Hoff on his feet. Fevra, 14 seconds further back. In third, we are watching a direct shootout here between first and second. It won't affect the overall outcome, but for Prado, it'll be a 1-1. For the first time this year, to win the Grand Prix. It'll be his second Grand Prix win of the season. Win number 38. And he wants that desperately. Koldenov responding to the threat from behind. As they work their way towards the end of lap 15. Just over five corners time. Siwa is up to six. Ferrato seven. Watson is down to eight. Just ahead of Van Horbeek. Tom Cock in ninth place. In tenth place ahead of Valandran. But all eyes on this battle here. Look at the ruts from above there. That's downhill, it's steep, it's choppy, and then you've just got that other little plateau that you drop down as well, just to unsettle the balance of the bike even more before they turn right and then across that start straight. The gap was 0.8 at the last split. It's still 0.8 exactly 
as we enter lap 16. Koldanov continues to lead. The three-lap board goes out next time around. And Jeremy Seaver is now up in the fifth place. He has moved past Mitch Evans. Mitch Evans now in fifth, uh, in sixth place. Again, Koldanov goes wide. Will he get caught out this time, though? He makes a mistake. He runs too wide. And Prado takes over the lead just at the top of the hill. He tried to outfox Koldanov a lap ago by going short and to the inside. Koldanov went to the outside, got an inch perfect a lap ago. But this time around, as you'll see from the replay, Koldanov just made a slight mistake. This will still keep him on the podium second overall, but he will be denied his second race win, or will he? Because Prado, the rabbit in the hat, will he continue to push on here and just build a gap? I'm sure we'll have a look at that in the same part of the racetrack, but Prado leads, finally. So Koldanov had a very long time at the head of the field, 15 laps, but on lap 16, Prado finally broke down the armour. Watch how he did it. Koldanov goes long, nothing wrong with that, exactly the same as it was a lap ago, but watch to the outside now, just overran, had to correct, and that was the difference, and that was the pass right there. And this was Siwa on Evans. This was for fifth place. It's been a hard ride through the field for the 91. Well, Fernandez and C were tied on the podium at the moment, 38 points apiece. So for C were, he is seven seconds behind Fernandez with two to go. He may just miss out on the podium. Here he is. Over the line into the penultimate lap for number 91. Jeremy Siwa. Ruben Fernandez will be coming in the opposite direction. There he is, opposite jumps. So that's the gap. Oop, just a loss of balance there, ever so slightly. Didn't cost him too much time. Just had to uh, rein it back a little bit. But he won't give up, will he? See what the team will be pushing him on. Right, Fernandez, bottom of your screen. And then top of the hill, Jeremy C with second rider in shot, first rider in shot. There he is, dropping in now into that turn. So that's what seven seconds looks like between these two. Oh, back end, oh, the mistake! And he stalls the engine. Wow, that might be a gift for Siwa. So he's going to have to regroup. There's the first mistake he's made all race. But will it cost him fourth in the race and third overall in the Grand Prix? Because all of a sudden, we have a battle on here for third overall between these two, Fernandez and Siwa. Sterry in the points in 17th, Kevin Brumman 18th, Jacoby 19th, Ashton Dickinson in the points as well in 20th place. So, working their way towards the end of this panel. Siwa has closed right in, but it's that same old thing, isn't it? It's one thing to catch, it's another thing entirely to find your way by and make that pass and make it stick. Fernandez will roll his sleeves up and dig in deep on this final lap, and he'll be kicking himself because of that mistake. Prado now six seconds clear of Koldenhoff. Fevre out in his own on third, but these two, well, it's about to get feisty between the 70 and the 91. What a great ride through the field, though, for Jeremy Siwa. He went down, Ferrato hit him, Lupino ran into the back of those two. Picked themselves up in, what, 29th, 30th place. And for Jeremy Siwa, he's just kept on pushing and pushing. He got a little bit of help there with a the mistake. 
not this corner, but the one across from here. A lap ago, when Fernandez just bodged it. But Fernandez has recovered well and composed himself. Holds a tighter line this time around. We'll see, we're just run out of time. Is there going to be one last push from the Monster Energy, Monster Energy Yamaha rider? We'll see, we're denied. Well, meanwhile, Jorge Prado celebrates past pit lane. It's going to be Grand Prix victory number 38 in perfect fashion here in Germany. He goes 1-1. He wins the Liquid Molly MXGP of Germany. And it's a 1-1 for the first time this year. Glenn Coldenhoff, he would have loved to have won race two.